Local impact reports will inform the processes of the DLCs, the District Licensing Commissioners, locations, densities, incidences, incidences of alcohol-related harm, all being part of the required information. The LIRs may not be required in areas that are of very low risk. Off licences are often linked to harm caused by alcohol. Hours have been reduced for off licences from 9am to 9pm. There are no exceptions. It is recognised that the supermarket industry was requiring an exemption or requesting an exemption, but the panel felt in the majority that there was a need, there was no need to have special provisions for any exemptions to any special sector. On licence hours are recommended to be 8am to 4am in the city centre as defined in the LAP and from 8am to 3am elsewhere. RMA provisions may well alter and reduce these hours, as will the determinations of the District Licensing Commissioners. Our city is evolving, growing outward and intensifying inwards. Change is rapidly occurring, and with that change, so to are our drinking habits and our entertainments. There are many variations. The panel wished to allow for and accommodate the continuing involvement of our society. At the same time, it was recognised and signalled that the proactive work the industry-led <coughs> initiatives are responsible for is leading to improvements in the actions and management of that industry. Host responsibility charters are a positive tool to help reduce alcohol-related harm. The temporary freeze and rebuttable presumptions add to that armoury. Special licences and club licences are recognised as part of the entertainment fabric and the panel has recommended that they are enabling, but also precautionary. Sound management practices and a positive record of delivery are emphasised. The work of our inspectorate is equally informative. Their role is crucial in the actual delivery of the policy along with the decisions of the District Licensing Commissioners and the refinements via the Resource Management Act. <laughs> the ongoing monitoring of these licences and holders is critical in the delivery of a safe environment that is envisaged by the local alcohol policy. The detail is in the reports that are before you, from the deliberations, the methodology of informing those deliberations and the feedback and the responses that helped sh shape the proposed alcohol policy. Finally, I would like to thank my fellow panel members, councillors Penrose, Wood, Crum and member Wilcox for their work and diligence. The work and professionalism dedicated to this policy by our staff has been exemplary. The sheer volume and complex complexity of the material has necessitated a Herculean effort, expert knowledge and a real focus. There were some seriously long candles burnt by our staff during this work. Our thanks to all the staff involved, but particularly to Belinda Hanson and Rebecca Turner for the work that they put in and the real focus they brought and to Mike Sinclair for his astute guidance and judgment. To our legal team, Richard Harker, and to Andrea for her work in, from the Democracy Services who kept us all organised and on the front foot. A sincere and genuine appreciation to all our staff for this work and this endeavour. Mr Chairman, I would move the recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Cashmore. Um, is, is there a sec sec have to second? Seconded Councillor Penrose. Uh, Councillor Fulapina. Thank you, Chair. I am declaring a conflict of interest in regards to the adoption of it, and I wanted that noted. <laughs> um, and, and the conflict, um, Chair, as, as I confirmed with our officers, is the fact that I'm still a sworn police officer, and as a result, I, I will declare that conflict of interest. Thank you. So I think we're, if there's any questions, we'll have questions of the officers, okay, or the officers here, will probably okay. answer those questions, um, and then we'll move into uh, into debate. So, are there any questions of, on the policy? Councillor Brewer. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we all know that um, uh, the intent, the statutory intent of the 2012 sale of um, sale and supply of alcohol act was all around. Um, harm minimising, and I just wondered what evidence uh, <clears throat> were, were we uh, relying on uh, around uh, off licences uh, being closed, um, 
particularly uh, at 9 p.m., and I'm particularly thinking of supermarkets here. Uh, my, the, the motivation for this question, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, is, is around, you know, are we on thick ice uh, if any of the big boys uh, try for an appeal as far as the evidence that we have used, the empirical evidence we have used, uh, to show, to prove that closing off supermarket sales from 9 p.m. and before 9 a.m. will in fact reduce harm. Well, could we just before you answer that question, I, I'd just like to put a caveat around that in that there are, I think, 6,000 6, pages of submissions and, you know, there's a huge amount of um, written material in those submissions. So to, um, you know, quantify it, is, it won't be that won't be that easy because of that, but the officers can answer it but, uh, in the best way they can. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you um, to answer your question, Councillor Brewer. Um, probably when we're at this stage in the process, getting to questions around the rationale for decisions of the panel, it may be more appropriate for the panel to answer those questions as it was their recommendations that are being put today. However, from an officer perspective, we do have evidence to show that reducing trading hours at off licenses can help to reduce alcohol-related harm. We have specific Auckland evidence that shows that alcohol-related crime data peaks from 9pm through to 1pm, uh, beg your pardon, 1am. Um, we've also looked at uh, various aspects uh, like the sales data of um, supermarkets and weighed that into the equation to consider how it would impact on supermarkets as stakeholders and as Councillor Wood um, rightly pointed out, we have taken into account a lot of feedback that we received through the submissions process, we received over 2,600 submissions, so that has been a big part of um, the equation as well. But I'll leave it to um, the panel to comment specifically on um, their recommendations that are being put today. Okay. Um, uh, well, just on that, Mr Chair, yeah. uh, certainly some clarification, because as we all know, uh, the draft LAP that was signed off for public consultation promoted 10 p.m. Uh, for off for off licence hours, and I suppose I want to I want to be sure uh, that we're not going to be funding an army of lawyers uh, uh, when we've now gone against that initial draft LAP recommendation of 10 p.m. to to 9 p.m. Uh, as to whether we've got the empirical evidence, the anecdotal evidence, and all our ducks lined up. Uh, to prove that that, that 9pm to 10pm is in fact a, a danger zone? Well, Councillor Brewer, I think one of the um, first points that you'd have to start at would be the fact that the ALA, what is it, the Alcohol um, <coughs> Review Authority, they, um, in, in the Wellington um, case, they seem to put more store on the, on the, um, the local... Um, um, wasn't empirical evidence to the extent that you're talking about, but the um, evidence that organisations such as the police and um, the hospital authorities uh, and other organisations that are working in this area um, had, because the ARLA said that the in international experience may not transpose into the local <coughs> situation. So um, for us to start talking about international um, evidence is, is, is a difficult one. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the, the panel um, made their decision after considering the evidence and written evidence and the evidence from uh, the numerous people that appeared before us um, and, and at different locations across Auckland. So that's how we kind of uh, um, built up a picture of... Uh, for a number of issues, and then we had to make decisions um, on on after after that in relation to ours and uh, those considerations. But Councillor Cashmore might have something further there as well. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You are quite correct in saying the the evidence, especially the uh, presentations over those days that we had. There were um, many people impassioned about the hours of alcohol and the correlation to alcohol-related harm. The other things we considered with consistency and we felt it was important for the off-licence industry that there was consistency and we weren't picking one set of winners over another. 
We also consider the inconvenience factors as someone who's on a shift work and you know, is it going to be inconvenient for them to have to wait another day to go and buy their bottle of wine or whatever. But we think that Kiwis are actually more organised than that. And they, by reducing these hours just by a slight amount, potentially will re reduce partially the um, alcohol-related poor decision-making that does, can occur after people have already started drinking. <clears throat> and and also will help reduce harm because of that area. So as in all things, there is that balance. But by reducing the hours, we are helping their aim to reduce alcohol-related harm. Thank you. Councillor um, Crum, did you add to that? Um, not that specific topic, Mr okay. Chairman, okay. but um, some general okay. comments, Council, if well, I may. Councillor Brewer, is that...? No, I, I accept what's been yeah. said. Okay, thank you. Councillor Crum? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You had a question, is it? Um, no, are you on comments or well, still questions? Well, we haven't got on to. Uh, are, are there any other questions? Okay, well, we're into the debate. Maybe um, I think Cash, Councillor Cashmore has probably let it off. Have you got anything else to say before you? Okay, well, Councillor Crum, if you wish to come in now, then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so it was a pleasure um, to be on this particular hearings panel. As <coughs> Councillor Cashmore has pointed out, it was a huge quantum of work. Um, and speaking personally, it was for us as panellists, but nothing close to what it was for staff. Um, so I too convey my sincere and hearty thanks for the many, many, many long hours and blood, sweat and tears that was put into this. Um, and for, as a helpful tool, I'd point out to my colleagues, um, Attachment D, this particular um, paper that the team put together, um, such as the likes were um, from the Psychoactive Substance um, LAPP um, body of work. So it's a really helpful chart that shows at quick glance what some of the tweaks were, what some of the wholesale changes were. Um, so a very, very handy tool and thank you again for putting that material together. Um, it was a pleasure to listen to many, many, many submitters um, of very wide and very different groups um, over a very long period of time. Um, I thank my fellow panellists for um, their good humour along the way. There were some variations in um, our approaches and the way that we viewed different um, different parts of the proposal um, and I'd like to point out just for posterity's sake um, my difference to the panel, um, my sole difference to the panel in regards to supermarket opening hours um, and acknowledge the 91 comments requesting um, an earlier opening time for um, off licences and specifically supermarkets. The national default time, Mr Chairman, is 7am. Um, our draft proposal was 9am and my proposal was a happy medium of 8am opening times for supermarkets. That was not met with support from my fellow panellists um, and the numbers will have to and have um, spoken for themselves. But I still think um, that that was a decision that could have been um, undertaken differently. Um, alcohol harm is not prevalent between the hours of 7am and 9am and I think it was reasonable um, to allow supermarket sales from 8am. Um, notwithstanding, uh, there has been a very um, good body of work and I think that where we have arrived at in terms of everything else um, has been something in which I support. Thank you.